Thank you for listening. Thank you for downloading. And thank you for checking out this bonus edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. I am your boy, 12 Kyle. Man, check this out. Uh, I just wanted to get on here and just kind of give a little PSA, if you will. Uh, and I want to talk about podcasts. And I didn't write any notes down. It's going to be a freestyle. Uh, shout out to Uncle Dolomite from the Too Much Game podcast. Straight off the top, just like he does. I've been looking and kind of sitting quietly and just peeping game on podcasters uh, and the podcast game. And it's been very, very, I don't want to say frustrating because I don't care that much to be frustrated, but it's very, very odd and very weird looking from what I'm seeing. Like, I think, I think if you're going to podcast and that's what I'm going to call this, if you're going to podcast, if you're going to pod, put something into your craft. I'm someone who is very passionate about this craft. Uh, I've been doing, I've been podcasting since 2015. The 12 Kyle podcast next year will turn 10 years old. And before that, uh, I had an internet radio show for five years. So I've been at this since 2010, really. And it's been a lot of fun. It's been a labor of love. And so naturally, you know, I, I care about what I do. Uh, but I, I don't see a lot of care in the game right now. I see a lot of, I see a lot of BS and it's, um, it's interesting. And, and, from the seat that I sit in, it could be frustrating. Um, I don't care enough to be frustrated, but I am observant enough to be frustrated. And like I said, I, I don't think people, at least from what I'm seeing, the clips and stuff that I see, I don't know that people really care like they probably should or put in the time to invest as they should. Um, I did, I did look this one thing up just to give you an idea. There's a gazillion podcast, right? So there's, there's only 24 hours in a day. So we ha we actually have to pick and choose which podcast we, you know, devote our time and efforts to. But according to the Google machine, there are over 5 million podcasts globally. Now of that 5 million as of February 20, currently 3.2 million podcasts are deemed what they call active. Very few, I think like five, 500,000 podcasts don't even make it past episode 10. So you know, there's, there's a lot of people getting into it, but they don't necessarily stick to it. And that was just something I just looked up right before I turned this microphone on. So you have a lot of people that are podcasts and 44% of the podcasts were established after 2020. So not to call a lot of these people COVID-19 podcasters, but some of them are, and that's cool. Some people had that kind of time. Cause think about it. We're locked up in the house. What else were they going to do? You know, and then some people like me, I think, turned the game up a little bit as they were locked in the house. And I started taking it more serious and I started giving you bonus content because I had a lot to say. But I don't know that people that I'm seeing now, whether or not you're just, you know, Joe Blow from Idaho or if you're the, you know, <laughs> former NBA player that now has a podcast. I don't see a lot of people putting a lot of effort into the craft of it. Uh, and And like, I know, like, it's really become numbers driven and I get it. Yeah. Numbers do drive the algorithms and stuff like that. But here's the thing again, there's only but so many people that you're going to reach. And there's only but so many hours in a day. You know, I have a podcast and on this podcast, I drop an episode every Thursday. And for the better part of the last few months, I've dropped the bonus episode on Sundays and, and I've given you bonus episodes because I have more than enough content. I was telling um, Baylor, shout out to BTG the Great. Uh, I was telling my boy Baylor, I was like, I have more ideas than I have time to record. Like I got that many. Ideas. If I sat down and wrote out all of the ideas, it would take me into 2025, honestly. And that's cool. But I know everybody doesn't operate like that. And everybody doesn't have a solo podcast. And me being a solo podcaster, you know, uh, only when... I have guests on what I have to, you know, set out a particular amount of time. I mean, I could record this at 8 a.m. on a Monday morning or I because I work from home or I could record it at, you know, midnight. It doesn't matter if I'm because I'm it's just me. Um, I don't have to have a lighting crew and a camera crew come in or anything like that. But I just don't see a lot of effort and a lot of um, attention to detail in the clips that I see. 
what I'm seeing is a lot of people just kind of lazily sitting around asking questions. The questions really aren't formatted towards a certain subject or a certain theme. And it's just a bunch of trash talking like, you know, and not to pick on what's my man name, uh, Jeff, Jeff T. Jeff T. I don't know if you guys know Jeff T. Former NBA player used to play for my line Hawks. I like Jeff, Jeff T. Jeff T. From what I can tell, at least some of the clips I've seen has a pretty decent podcast. He's a funny guy. He's a good storyteller. But, you know, when you look at his podcast from afar, it looks one way. But when you look up close, he's there. The guys and even in his even in the description, they'll say Jeff Teague is back with the guys like you never get the names of the guy. I don't even know who the guys are. I've only seen clips of his his podcast. And it's just guys just sitting around and they're asking Jeff questions. And it's more or less. Let's have a gossip session. And it's and not and I'm not don't, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying Jeff is gossiping because I don't know Jeff personally. I don't know. I'm assuming that these NBA stories that he tells are, you know, he played 10 plus years in the league. So he should have a lot of NBA stories. And there are a lot of NBA fans who would tune in to listen. And they and I'm assuming that they do. But that's kind of like, to me, low hanging fruit, because after a while, you're going to run out of stories or people are going to run out of time. Just having the time to sit and listen to you just talk randomly. I think another thing that I see in this, not on his podcast, but I see just in clips because I see a lot of clips because I see clips on YouTube because I have to place this episode on YouTube. So I'm on YouTube a lot and I see clips on Twitter, sometimes on Instagram. And the thing that's always interesting is when I see clips, I never see a clip on any, any podcast that makes me say, you know what? I want to go see that. I want to go listen to what they're talking about. I never do because the clips get me there, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't move me. Like I saw, I put it like this. I saw a clip the, uh, just yesterday of one of my favorite singers. I'm not going to mention her name and I'm not going to mention the podcast she was on, but she was on the podcast and the clip that they posted was a clip talking about her having sex. And I'm like, that's the best y'all got. <laughs> like, cause you know, the clip is supposed to be something to make people want to come and tune in. And maybe that's it. I don't know. It was a bunch of women, you know, so I guess maybe that would make a woman want to watch or listen for me. No, I mean, I'm she, my favorite, one of my favorite singers, she's a woman. She likes to have sex just like any, any, any of us does. So that part doesn't bother me. But I mean, like if you're just going to sit around and that's the topic of the conversation, or if you sat down for an hour, and that's the only thing that you could pull to say, you know what? Hey, let's, this is going to pull people in. I'm good, man. I'm, I mean, I'm good. That's to me, that's no different than, you know, said NBA players sitting around talking about groupies or whatever. I mean, like, again, it's low hanging fruit. Like, where's the effort? Can you talk about something where people can understand and kind of gravitate towards you? Cause here's the thing. When I listen to podcasts, I'm really listening to the host. Like I'm there for the host. And even when I have guests on my podcast, I try to make sure that I'm featuring them. I'm not, it's particularly if I'm interviewing someone, I want, it's, it's, it's them. It's 12 Kyle and co-host eclectic or co-host Baylor, co-host Zell or Derek or whomever. And if I'm interviewing someone, it's totally about the person that I'm interviewing. It's not about me, you know? Um, and even in those episodes, I do less talking because people want to hear the story. And so like, I understand that like everybody doesn't come from where I came from. And what I mean by that is I have a, I have a broadcasting background, right? I, I minored in broadcasting. I think I may have mentioned that on this podcast before. But I minored in broadcasting when I was at South Carolina State University. But, my, but my, my major was marketing. So I have a marketing degree. I have a minor in broadcasting. Um, has the minor helped me in bro in podcasting? Yes, of course. Because, you know, I, I'm not shy when it's time to get up on the microphone. But at the same time, you know, it's some little things that I learned along the way, like letting your guests talk. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I hear... And again, these are just on clips. The guests, you got the host, and then you got the guests, you know, in, 
and the host asks a question, and before the guests could even get it out, like they're they're talking all all over again. This young lady on one of my favorite podcasts, uh, QLS, she does that all the time, and I'm like, can you let them get the answer out, like? please. <laughs> and I still love the podcast, but I mean, like she's, a, she can be annoying at times. I'll be honest. And she's made me turn some episodes off. Um, but I like the podcast and it's not to bash her, but it's just like, where's the level of professionalism? Again, you got a guest in here. I want to hear the guest. You're a part of the show. I, we, we get it right. <laughs> but at the same time, no, I'm, I want to hear this person talk. If I had Chris rock on here, on my episode, you want to hear Chris Rock. You don't want to hear me tell jokes because <laughs> I'm not Chris Rock. You know what I mean? So it's like people get in the way. And but like I said, just talking and just blabbering and just kind of spitting over themselves just for content, I guess. And it's something I heard the other day, really, that kind of triggered this thought for me make, to make this particular episode was I was listening to Bomani Jones, uh, The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Big fan, been rocking with Bomani since, you know, the morning Jones. And the thing that he said that was very interesting was he said that, uh, oh, speaking of podcasts, look, look who's calling me, King Germ. <laughs> I'll call him back. So Bomani said, like, just because you have the ability to record a podcast doesn't mean that you should report record a podcast. And that kind of stuck with me because, like, that's so true, like, Everybody shouldn't be doing this, but clearly everybody is because again, it's 3.2 million active podcasts. And that was as of February, this past February. So we know the numbers through the roof, but just, you know, if you're listening to this or you watch me on YouTube, thank you for watching, you know, put some time and effort into the podcast, like have a theme, talk about it, be engaging don't look like you just sit there doing people favors, like, and, and be present in the interview or if you're interviewing someone, um, you know, obviously this year, the, one of the most talked about interviews, uh, was Shannon Sharp's interview with Cat Williams. And let's be clear. I thoroughly enjoyed the interview, but that was not an interview. If you don't believe me, go back and watch it. Cat Williams took over that interview from the time that he sat down and Shannon Sharp was on his heels, but he let him rock because Cat was giving you so much stuff. He was giving you gossip. He was giving you facts, I guess. And he just let him go. But I mean, there was no way that Shannon could reel him in. Now, keep in mind that interview did over like 60 million views on YouTube. And according to Shannon, you know, it made him at least four or $5 million just on that one interview. The flip side of that is you got to be really careful about stuff like that. And again, Shannon doesn't need my advice. He, he does this for a living. I do this on the side. You got to be careful because when you have that kind of success, sometimes you start chasing. So you start chasing numbers. And I heard Shannon mention the numbers. He, and, and he was saying the numbers really in amazement, but you got to be careful because when you start chasing numbers, then it becomes about the numbers. And you don't ever want your podcast to be about the numbers. Because here's the thing. If you're not a Shannon Sharp, if you're not, uh, you know, <laughs> Michelle Obama or, you know, I don't know, Joe Rogan or Joe Budden, you know, the reality is the money in podcasting is drying up for as long as I've been podcasting and I don't count anybody's money. I don't know what anybody makes other than the, you know, upper echelon podcasters. I only know one person who had a nine to five and quit his nine to five and podcasting became what he did full time. And he was able to still keep living the way that he was living. Assume, I'm assuming, because I don't know his personal and I don't know his finances. I just know him from afar. I don't even know him personally like that. But he's there's only one that I've seen. And I've seen a lot of people. I've seen a lot of podcasters come, seen a lot of podcasters go. If you're going to pod, don't think that you're going to get into this to make money. Because you're not. You're probably going to spend more money than you make. Because microphones cost. Because equipment costs, computers cost, 
set up all this other stuff costs. And then more importantly, it's time. It's time consuming. And, you know, the one thing that we don't have control of is how much time we got here. So, you know, you definitely don't want to be spinning your wheels thinking that, you know, you're going to turn something into a conglomerate. Now, can you make money? Yeah, you can make money. There's money to be made. I don't necessarily know that there's enough money for you to be independently wealthy for some. Yeah. I mean, but, and I use, I I can use Jeff Teague again as, as an example, he's on Shannon Sharp's network. So he has money coming in, but I mean, Jeff Teague played years in the league. So I'm pretty sure, you know what? I'm not going to assume. Let's just assume Jeff has a nice little stash stashed away somewhere. So Jeff, he ain't got to punch nobody clock, right? Me and you starting off the ground, the reality is you're probably not going to make, at least for me, let me just speak for me. I don't think, unless something drastically changes, I don't think that I'm going to make enough money to stop me from doing what I do on my nine to five. And I do okay on my nine to five. I make $5. So yeah, but I'm being serious though. I mean, like, I don't think the money's there. And from what I can tell, especially as the number of podcasts grow, the money's really not going to be there much. The money that's there won't be there that much longer. Honestly, if you look at trends, because now we're talking the, we've gotten past the COVID and now people are back outside. So what's there to do? Are you going to sit and listen when you had, maybe you were going to sit and listen to a podcast when you didn't have anywhere else to go. But now that you're back outside, you know, and at the time of this recording, it's about to be summertime. When you got time to listen to a podcast, you got time to listen to this one. Cause I know you do. And I, I, I'm, I'm thankful for that, but trust me, I don't, my life doesn't circle around whether or not, you know, I hit a certain number. I get a thousand downloads this week. If I do cool, if I don't, that's cool too. Cause guess what? The week is going to keep going. And things are going to keep happening. I'm going to keep being 12 Kyle and I'm going to keep living for as long as God wants me to. The bill's going to get paid and I'm going to keep eating and having a good time and being with my family, my friends. And so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be like, I'm not, my life isn't dependent on it. But now if you did 61 million views on a, on a podcast, you know, you'd like to recreate that or at least, you know, establish your brand to the point where, you know, you got, you're getting 10, 15 million views uh, an episode. But there's a lot that came with that Cat Williams interview. You know what I'm saying? Like Shannon Sharp, for as big as Shannon Sharp is, he was in a different pace and, excuse me, he was in a different place and space after that interview. He had people talking about him who probably didn't even know he existed prior to that interview. And everybody did it. Everybody did the low hanging fruit thing where somebody puts out some content and then you got to have a, uh, uh, an episode about their content. I, I mean, I'm not having a, <laughs> I'm not having an episode about what King germ said, unless King germ said something crazy to the point where, you know, national security was involved or something like that. Germ got thrown in jail, you know, and I had, you know, $27 and 82 cents to bail him out, you know, something like that. Other than that, shout out to Pod and Saved Our Marriage anyway. But no, I mean, like, that's really low. To me, that's low-hanging fruit. Like, it ain't even your content. It's, your content is based off of what somebody else said. So let's talk about what Cat Williams said. And you make a whole hour, two-hour episode about what Cat Williams said. And you got, you know, not even a tenth of what Shannon did. I mean, because it was already there. It's just, at this point, it's just opinions at this point. But I mean, like I said... I, if you're going to pod, put a little bit more effort into your topics, put a little bit more effort into your business, put a little bit more effort into what you're doing. A lot of stuff that I'm seeing looks like everybody's just showing up with microphones and they hit the camera, they turn the camera, turn the lights on and they hit record and it's BS. I'm going to just keep it a bean with y'all. It's BS. And the thing about BS is people see through that. They do. And I mean, like, I don't know what people think when they see or listen to this podcast. I get feedback all the time. I don't know what, well, I know my friends, 
but the average Joe who never heard Joe or Jane, who never heard this podcast before, never saw me before. I don't know what they think. I know that they can make certain assumptions about me based on what they see, based on what they hear, so forth and so on. But they don't know me personally. But if you listen long enough, you'll start to know me. If you listen long enough, you'll start to be like, you know what? I like him. He's all right. I like his podcast. I like his I like his vibe. I like his steeds. I like how he, he gets down. And that's cool. That is cool. That's for podcasts. Really, that's what you want. You want somebody to be able to vibe with you because here's the thing. When I record episodes and just like when other podcasters, when they record episodes, we don't know how the public's going to take it. For me, the satisfaction comes in when I stop hitting record. Once I'm done, I'm done. It's just like writing a letter or writing a rhyme or writing a poet, writing, writing a poem. When you hit that period and you put the pen down, everything else is taken care of at that point because you pushed it out. A lot of the stuff that at least for what I think for me content. I mean, I call it content, but it's really just, it's topics. These are things that I would talk about if I was sitting in a room with Dolomite or sitting in a room with Jay Fresh or sitting in a room with Baylor or we talk on the phone or germ, you know, like that. So it's not, or, or Jay Boog. It's, it's content to the world, but to us, it's just conversation. And I don't mind. And I enjoy bringing you into the conversation. I love the conversations that I have with my wife. I love the conversations that I have with my kids, but this is, this is like an extension of that. And I enjoy it. But every time that I show up, I'm going to show up. I just want you other podcasts to do the same. If you're going to, if you're going to pod, show up, show up for the podcast, particularly if the podcast has your name on the marquee, because when it fails, nobody's going to say the podcast failed. They're going to say you failed. And you got to live with that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out this bonus edition of the 12 Kyle podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast. The podcast drops every Thursday at midnight from time to time. We drop bonus episodes just like this one on Sundays at midnight. Um, if you're on social media, hit us up. Follow me, 12 Kyle, across the board, Twitter, X, Facebook. Um, the, the, what's, what's Threads? I'm on Threads, uh, Instagram. Uh, follow me 12 Kyle. The podcast also has its own page, uh, the 12 Kyle podcast and the, po the podcast page is also on TikTok. Um, if you feel so inclined, if you want to support the show financially, I'll take a dollar or two dollar sign T W E L V E K Y L E. Again, that's going to do it for me. I am your boy 12 Kyle. And again, this is just a little PSA. If you're going to pod, do it right. I'll catch you guys next time. Five G's. Cheers.